Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is James and we have been solving until 17, number 17 of model test one. So let's get started uh, from number 18. <clears throat> okay, so number 18. All right, we have what? Uh, first of all, as, as soon as you see this problem, you could say we have piecewise function, right? So f of x, which is equal to uh, five over x minus two when x is not equal to 2 and k when x is equal to 2. All right, so this is working for a jump, right? Uh, if you have a function, if you have a function or something called discontinuity, we have a jump over there, we have a hole over there, and if k is that value of f of 2, it works for this case. But in this case, what happens? When you're, when you're taking the limit, when you're taking the limit such that x goes to 2 of 5 over x minus 2, it's undefined for some other reasons. What is that particular reason? Well, we've been talking about that reason last time also. The reason is that it is a vertical asymptote. It is not just a hole. We have an asymptote that diverges, that makes this function go diverging from that point, right? And that's the definition of vertical asymptote. So whatever k value that we have for that particular function or particular value, I guess, for that function, it doesn't make sense and we can't have a continuous function. And what is, the, uh, what is, um, what is a definition of continuous function? Well, definition of continuous function is that if we are plugging a, if you're taking limit of f of x as x approaches a, that must be f of, oops, f of a. That is the definition of a continuity. We, we haven't been really talking about this thing, but, but that was just, you know, I guess I, I, I stressed out the importance on this AB lectures, I guess, uh, AP, AB lectures instead of SAT math 2C sections. And you know, this particular question wouldn't really appear on SAT math 2C sections because I guess it is uh, focusing on a conceptual understanding of continuity. But here's the thing, uh, it might appear, right? You know, it's, it's even though the probability that this question will appear in your test I guess we have to prepare for that last question that will determine uh, that determine whether you get 800 or 760, right? So I hope you're getting this correctly. And also the reason why uh, this uh, the answer is that no value of k will make function of x a continuous function is that the reason why this limit, uh, the reason why this doesn't exist or undefined, it's, no, it's not because it has a hole. Well, it ha even, if, even if it has a hole, we could still, we could still have a continue, uh, we could still have a limit value, right? But in this case, the limit itself doesn't exist. So uh, because of vertical asymptote, so the answer is E. Okay, so let's do number 19. So what is the probability that a prime number uh, is less than seven given that a prime number is less than 13, okay? So first of all, what is a, uh, what is a, all of those prime number, a set of prime numbers that is less than 13? Well, we have two and three and five and seven and what, 11? And that's it, right? We have 13, but we're looking at a prime number, a set of prime numbers that are less than 13. So we have five, but we're looking at, out of those five, we're looking at these three. So again, by definition, well, not a definition, but the properties of property, uh, probability was that specific event over, over the total events, right? Three over five. The answer is that easy. Okay, so that was the answer, I guess. Let's get into number uh, number 20. Okay. So we have an, an uh, one of those ellipses, right? 4x squared plus uh, 8y squared, which is equal to 64. And we have a circle, which is x squared plus y squared, which is equal to uh, nine. 
And what can we do in order to get Y coordinate intersection of those things? Which means we, we have to find, we must find a solution that satisfies this and the other conditions, other equations at the same time. So we could do some of those systematic approach by multiplying four to the second equation, which becomes four X squared plus four Y squared, which is 36, right? And we could subtract we could subtract this from that one, right? So if you subtract it, if you subtract it, what happens? Well, we cancel out those things. And 4y squared minus 4, uh, 4, uh, 8y squared minus 4y squared, that is equal to 4y squared. And that's equal to 64 minus 36, which is 28, right? So y squared, oops must be equal to seven. Thus y is equal to plus minus root seven. So the answer is plus minus uh, root seven for y coordinate. Simple, right? So it wasn't even geometry, it was algebra, right? So I guess you are, you know, kind of connecting those two branches of mathematics quite fluently, like this way, all right. So each term of a sequence after the first is inversely proportional to the term preceding it. If the first two terms are 2 and 6, what is the 12th term? Okay, so we have 2 and 6. So it was multiplied by 3. So we have to multiply by 1 over 3 because that was inversely proportional. So we have 2. And again, six, because it is again inversely proportional of one over three, that's three. So we have two and six going on, right? For the odd terms, for the odd terms, odd number of terms, what the first term and the third terms and the fifth terms and the seventh terms, we have two for the odd terms. And six for the even terms. Okay, and we are looking at 12, right? 12 terms, that is even number, which is six. So the answer is B.